you for joining us on our first in the monthly series of yeah. Illuminators. My name is Ann Smith, and I live in Southwest Florida, the Everglades, that once was home to the Calusa Indians and now is home to the Miccosukee and the Seminole tribes. As a member of the Green Tent Circle, I am so excited to welcome you to our global sacred circle where all who come are nurtured as we care for one another and Mother Earth. We illuminate women and girls leadership who are making a difference. We reach out to those who have been voiceless and in great need. We are a non-hierarchical structure, a web of sacred circles of women and girls who want to help. And men and boys are also welcome. We meet every Saturday at this time to dream, plan, tell stories, share resources, and be nurtured. So someday, all women and girls will thrive. All are welcome. Please visit our website, we also have a Facebook page and group that you're all welcome to where we can share our information and just say hello. Now, I am going to ask Gail, our dear sister Gail, to open our circle with this sacred ceremony that she has brought to us today. Uh, I've been asked by a friend in Russia, uh, an Inuit friend in North Russia, <laughs> to be part of her worldwide ceremony she's doing today to gather the women to go to the river and offer a heart, peace and harmony blessing. So we're supposed to be doing it right now at this moment, but I prefer to be with you. <laughs> so I brought my ceremony to the group. So I've lit the world peace candle that has been traveling the world since 1999 uh, to all the countries around the world. I offer tobacco blessings to the water. And since I'm not at the river, which is only two blocks away, so I'm close. But the water I chose today to honor is uh, from Iceland, the Arctic. I chose Iceland over Greenland because this water is from Bear Falls. And my spirit name, Ashlok, means black bear. So I chose bear, bear energy uh, of the water. And I thank you for being part of the ceremony with other sisters from around the world as we sit here in ceremony. Oh, oh. thank oh. you so much. And she brought today her sister Maria, who is from Greenland. And, um, and this is her, your first time, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now, I, so Marty, I don't have in front of me your extensive bio, but I know, I know you and love you so much that I can um, just say, Marty is, Marty, you are to me, and if we want to put this on um, what a speaker view, when she starts speaking, you will get the full Marty. And to get the full Marty is to get this incredible dynamic loving energy. She's an actor. She's a playwright. She's an activist. And when something is needed, such as bringing peace to an area where guns have caused so much problem and violence and dealing with COVID, she brings her healing powers. We do have her bio on our website, so you can read all about her. And she has this amazing video that just came out. Perfect timing, Marty, for you to, for us to do that and then for you to speak. And she's going to speak and we're all going to listen and then we'll be able to reflect back. You know, you get an idea, you find a need, you get an idea. And if it's the right idea, it goes like that. And I know that you have been honored by the president of the United States for your work. I know that the accolades keep pouring in because the work is so effective. Mm -hmm. 
the way I was raised, like, I didn't have the opportunity to be soft. What are we gonna do about the hearts of people that need to be healed? As a black man, this is like, you always talk to me, able to push forward no matter what. We can disrupt, disarm, yes trauma. I need to connect to the person that I believe understands my situation. And that's really where the, be the, the beginning of the healing starts. The gun just went off and he got shot. And he always says that he hate for something like that happen to me. It really just made me value life. When trauma hits, mm -hmm. it's unexpected. Yes. You don't see it coming. There's been a lot of trauma with shootings and COVID and there should be therapy available to everyone. You are uniquely who you are and you get to be who you are and you get to feel the way that you feel. We didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do on how not to be angry at who pulled the trigger and killed my father and killed my brother. I didn't know how that looked. You know, I still had effects from the paralyzation, like nerve damage and you know, mm -hmm. tingling going down my legs. But after yeah. I went through the ungun process with Dr. Marty and released the things that was holding me back, after ungunning and releasing and healing my mind, my body reacted and I started to get that feeling back in my toes. We are responsible for so many lives on the road. So stop, breathe, and think is something that I've implemented in my company because it does help. It helps with their mental state and it helps with their surroundings. Because trauma is transferable, but guess what? So is healing. So is healing. So, Marty, take it more away. <laughs> and, they, and if you put yourself on, you know, speaker view, you'll get the whole view of Marty. <laughs> you, well, first of all, and it's, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be in a room with you. I, uh, I look so forward to being here this morning. And so I just want you all to know that I want you to be in, in a relaxed state of mind because I don't come here with anything scripted. I'm just going to just, if you will, allow me to just speak from the heart and allow me to share a few things about uh not so much what we do, because you just saw a glimpse of that, but why do we do what we do? Why is it so important for us right now to be working on our inner peace? That So I kind of want to dig into that, and I want to leave you with a few tools today of things that you can do when, when we're not on this Zoom room, but you're kind of feeling overwhelmed, and you'll be able to uh, do these simple things. I want to leave you with a few of those tools today, and then we'll leave time for some questions and answers. But I'm so glad that that scissor reel uh, is available now and that you had an opportunity to see that. As a matter of fact, one of my trainers is, is on, although she's not on screen, Tamika Andrea was one of the, uh, the, the ones featured in the video who talked about her father and her brother was actually shot and killed. Another one of my trainers is actually in the community right now setting up a table where we are um, collecting shoes for the homeless and we're giving those out uh, on behalf of Ungun Institute uh, in a community festival that's going on today. And as soon as I leave here, I'm gonna be running out so that I can go and meet him and allow him to leave and I take over the, ta the table. So Ungun Institute, the word institute was was really important to me to add because I knew that this work could not happen just with uh, the vision that God has given me. I knew that it was going to be so much bigger than one person to be able to do or a few people to be able to do. Ungun Institute is all of us. That's including you. And that's why the you, if you see the you in our, um, our logo is so important. You means you, 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 all of us, right? So I want you to be a part of Ungun Institute today. After um, we have this, this time together, I, I hope that you take ownership and say, you know, yes, I am a part of Ungun Institute. So that's really where, where I want your, your mindset to be uh, as we uh, dig into this. The first thing that I wanna share with you is how it came about. 
Uh, I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I am an activist is the word that I've coined. A, a professional actress is what I desire to be. Growing up, this was um, this was my way of what we call ungunning. I uh, so when we ungun, we're able to let go, get rid of, and remove anything that can be an emotional block inside of us that keeps us from moving forward in a positive way. That's simply what ungun is. Like, have you ever been through something and you you're dealing with it for so long that you just emotionally, you just feel like you're carrying a, just a bag of bricks on both shoulders as you're trying to walk, you're trying to just get out of bed, you're trying to return those phone calls, you're trying to check those emails, but it's so difficult to do because you are emotionally heavy, emotionally heavy, you need to ungun. You need to get rid of some of those things and shed some of that and push it up out of you. And that's easier said than done. But the good news is we have created some tools and techniques that's so simple that you're going to be like, I do that anyway. <laughs> well, thumbs up. That's awesome. But this is the thing. What's key is knowing when to do, do those things, right? Like we all have fire extinguishers, but we forget where we put it when the fire actually happens because in the moment that the trauma hits, you're like, you're panicking. And you're going, oh my God, I don't even know what I did with the fire extinguisher. That's what happens. We all may have one, but if you don't know where it's located, how to get it quickly when you need it, what good was it to have? And that's what these tools and techniques are about. So if you practice these tools and techniques every single day, when you're going through an emotional fire, you will know what to do because you've been practicing every single day. Like right now, if you ask me, Marty, well, where's your fire extinguisher? I'm gonna tell you, I think it's in our garage. I think, but what if every month I did a checklist and says, you know, I'm gonna make sure that my, my furnace filter has been changed. I'm gonna check in my, the batteries in my, my um, uh, fire detectors. Uh, uh, and then I'm gonna make sure I know where my fire extinguisher is. That's me saying, I'm gonna do a checklist on those things that I will need in an emergency situation. Why don't we do that? And if we do that with those things, why wouldn't we do those things with what we need emotionally? Because when trauma hits, as the video stated, it just shows up. There's no warning, it just happens. By a show of hands. Now, I know Ann said that you all can have me on, on a, a speaker view. I personally have you on where we're all on the screen. And I tell you why, because I like to be engaged. I like to see everybody at the same time. I do a lot of interactive talking. So I would like by a show of hands right now. So if you want to put me back in into a shared view there, where we can see each other, by a show of hands, how many of you actually practice self-care? Okay, some form of it. That's really good. That looks really good that a few of you all have raised your, most of you all raised your hand. But I want you to incorporate some of these other things. The first thing is who can remember in there when um, one of our speakers spoke about what she implements into her company for the, the truck drivers that she, she gained this knowledge from ungun. Who remembers those three words that, she, that, that we talked about? Anybody you wanna put it in the chat? I'll give you a hint. The initials to those three words are S, B, T. It was S, B, T. Do you remember what those three words were? Self-protection. No, that's a good one though. It was okay. stop, yeah. breathe, think. Oh, okay, okay. Stop, breathe, think. The reason that we're asking everyone to stop, breathe, and think, because when something happens, we panic. As human beings, we automatically, that's what we do, we panic. And when we panic, the one thing we stop doing is breathing. Yeah, 
we actually, it's like, oh my God. <gasps> You're not getting any oxygen to your brain to be able to think, to know what you need to do next. And when you're not really able to think, be intentional about what comes next, you just react. And you react from that place of emotion because the mind cannot really determine what's happening. It only is reflecting on what it is, what it, what it feels or what it sees, what the, you know, when your spirit tells the mind, oh my goodness, I'm feeling scared. So then the mind starts to recall all the times you felt scared and then it starts sending out messages to the body. Well, the last time he felt scared, he punched someone <laughs> or, they, or they ran away or they just, they just froze and couldn't move. So these are the, this is what the mind is telling you to do. But if you take over the mind, come on now, stay with me. You take over the mind and you are intentional about this is happening just like this. I need to stop, take a breath breathe and let me think i got control of this no worries let's call 911 call someone call 911 please okay let's not let's not touch them they're bleeding does anybody have a, 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 a does anybody have a stop the bleed kit do we have a doctor uh, nearby see being able to just stop taking a breath getting the oxygen to your brain allows you to think so that you can now make an informative decision on what to do next. You literally have jumped out in front of this trauma. A lot of the gun violence that is happening in our city, our countries, and all around the world is simply because those three things are not happening. They're responding from a place of hurt, fear, and paranoia. I'm going to get a gun because the world's so bad now and everybody's got a gun and I'm going to get me one. And so if I have to use it, I'll be prepared. That's the attitude. So now you got your gun on your hip. And as soon as somebody does something to you that makes you mad and makes you angry and the altercation starts and nobody's stopping and breathing and thinking we're grabbing guns and we're shooting each other. And it happens just like that. But if I am intentional about, I'm going to communicate better emotionally through my inner self so that I can create positive energy that connects with others that I am around. I will now have an opportunity to disarm trauma and come up with a better solution for the problems that we're facing. All it takes is one person to enter into a room with trauma and we not help that person disarm it, that it begins to spread like COVID. All of a sudden the whole room is panicking. All it takes is one person to come into a room and go, run! And everybody just take off and start trampling over each other and running and we, and we didn't, but, but because that person decided to do that and we responded to the trauma versus disarming it to stop, breathe and think, what's going on? What are we running from? Maybe just duck. It could be something that's going on, but you get, get down low and see now if you can see what's happening, assess it before you just respond to it. That's important. Now, I want to move forward a little bit. The reason that it's important for us to do that or even to be prepared to do that, who do you think we have to start with first? I see you, Ann. Who else? Anybody else? Who do we need to start with first to practice this? Yeah, exactly, Angela. Everybody's doing this to themselves. You have to start with yourself. You have to start with you. If you think about everything that's happening in our world right now, even when we turn on the world news or the local news, the first thing when we hear something, we go and look at what they're doing. We're pointing fingers. But I want you to now take in that information a little differently. When you hear something that's going on, 
How can I make a difference in what's happening? Because see, world leaders don't change the world. They can only change themselves. That's where it starts. A good world leader that needs to shift some things in the world has to start with changing themselves first. I had to start with me. The Dr. Marty Casey that you see before you today is not who I was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm 51 years old and I'm excited about that because I didn't have to live to be this age and have the knowledge that I have if I didn't first discover the person I needed to change was me. And man, that wasn't an easy discovery. It was not an easy discovery. Can I just be honest, Maria? I saw you clapping for me and I thank you, sister, but it was not easy. Because a lot of times when we make our decisions, we think we make our decisions from a place of this is what I have to do for me to protect me. And I doesn't, I don't care what anybody else think, but we should, we should care enough about others to where we are willing to start with ourselves to be our best self. So that when I'm in this space with you, I give you the best of me mm. and you coming in with the best of you. And so now we've created the best atmosphere but when you show up today with a bad attitude and you didn't have your coffee this morning and you're coming in like, ah, I don't want to be here. And no, oh, I could have been doing something else. Then now I'm upset because I'm like, I'm the speaker. They're not even happy to see me. They don't even, they're not even paying attention. Well, I'm just going to have say something. We've wasted each other's time. But I was excited to come in here today. Why? because Anne was excited to invite me. And Anne was excited to invite each of you. And as I see you right now on this Zoom, you come with excitement as you're just intensely listening and smiling. And that is the energy that we're creating in this circle. And so when others begin to review this and do the replay and look at this, they're gonna look at this with a smile because it's what we created, but it started with ourselves and how we decided to show up. So hi, Laura, so I see my sister, hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. I am so sorry. I'm in Poland, in Auschwitz, and we had the whole inauguration of the Peace Lab and there was no Wi-Fi for me to get on to and I had Zoom back to the hotel. So I am so sorry. I'm sure Anne or Leah was- Every, Everything is perfect. Honored. There is never nothing to be sorry about. You know, things happen and goodness knows I, I, I understand that. And, and you know what, that brings me to a good segue, but I just wanted to stop and acknowledge you to say hello and we loved you and we missed you in the moments you were, were not here. But I Dr. do- Dr. Marty? Yes. Knowing that you were going to be on the program for today, and today was the day that our tour group went, went to Auschwitz, where 1.1 million souls were tortured and exterminated. All I kept thinking was, we need ungun. We need ungun. Mm. To ungun our minds, our hands of weapons of destruction and uh, shift our heart connect the mind back to the heart. And thank you for the work that you do, my sister. I honor you. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. Thank you. And we're going to, we're, and we're building our way up to exactly what Laura saw just said. We want to start with the, with the base and the base is ourselves and the simple things that we can do so we can be better when we connect with others, because we don't just connect with others in our household or even in our own race and community, we connect with each other all around this world. And that's why we're seeing some of the things of what Laura saw just spoke about, because somebody showed up with some bad unresolved trauma, connecting with other people, sitting at a table, making decisions on something that then became a bad decision and got a group of people to say, we support this bad decision. And then that bad decision turns into a war. 
but we don't necessarily think about it like that. We just look at the big picture, like, oh my gosh, we got wars going on. But that war, if we were to bring it all the way back down, it started with one person that did not work on themselves and they had unresolved trauma. That's the root cause. What I love about Ungun Institute is that we have been able to discover, create, and uh, teach from a place of something simple that anybody can understand. And what I mean by that is, is that chaos is complicated. Trauma is complicated. Hurt and pain is complicated. You don't clean dirt with more dirt. We don't need complicated tools and techniques in order to fix our trauma. We have to keep it simple. It has to be practical. It has to be simple. It has to be doable. So it's going to be very interesting when you see these simple things I'm going to tell you about in a few moments will lead up to how we can stop a war. Because the greatest war is the war that goes on inside of self. That's the greatest war is when you are, when your spirit is not well inside of self. And I had to come to that, that, that conclusion with me. See, I grew up in a household where my father was an abusive alcoholic to my mother. And I was a daddy's girl, love my father. I was actually even on the phone when my father took his last breath. I was trauma. But the four principles that Ungun is built on is give, forgive, heal, and live. In order for me to forgive my father for the things that I witnessed him doing to my mother as a young child, I had to give him the respect as a father. And I still showed up and I funeralized my father by myself. I live in St. Louis. My father lived in Modesto, California. So when I flew out to Modesto, California, I flew out alone to go and funeralize my father. I gave him that respect as a father because I wouldn't be here without his contribution. <laughs> and then I had to forgive him for the things of what I've witnessed in order for me to heal. And now that I have been able to ungun those things and heal, I now live my best life. I didn't say anything about money. I didn't say anything about credit. I didn't say anything about awards. And I didn't say anything about people I know. Those are some extra added things that can make your life full or easy in a sense. But those are not your basic things of being able to live a full and healthy mental and physical life. Give. What can you give? It's not always about money. Can you give time? Can you give advice? Can you give someone a helping hand? Can you give grace to yourself and to others? Can you give your opinion without offense? What can you give today? Forgive. Who do you need to forgive? You have to first forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for not forgiving others. And then forgive those others who you've been holding on to some things because she didn't buy you that, that, that shirt that you really wanted your aunt when you were little and she bought it for your cousin. Forgive, let it go. Move on. Who else do you need to forgive? Maybe we need to forgive those that we don't even have anything to do with what we're witnessing, but we're eyewitnessing some other people's trauma and some other people's hurt and pain. See, my father didn't abuse me, he abused my mother, but because I, I witnessed that, it still landed on me. Trauma's transferable, but so is healing. That's the good news, so is healing. So who do we need to forgive? Now heal. Once you do those two things and you can't do it out of order, let me tell you that as you're writing this down, it has mm -hmm. to go in this order. And these are the four principles of ungun, right? So now you can heal. 
what does healing look like? Oh, healing is so freeing. Healing will make you feel rich when you don't have a dime in the bank account. Healing will make you think that you're tall and you know you're only five foot one. That would be me. Healing, <laughs> healing will allow you to speak to anybody, anywhere, anytime, whether you know their language or they look like you or they you know them personally. You will just smile on every time you see somebody. I, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh my gosh, that's healing. And I want it to spread. I want it to spread, I mean, in such a way, just like COVID went across our world and it impacted us in such a, a, a hurtful way. I want ungun healing to spread just like that, that we infect everybody with this good stuff. Because when you are healed, you're capable of doing anything good of doing anything good. Do you know what I would say all the time, individuals who feel the need to own a gun, and I said this to you all, that comes from a place of being paranoid because there's so much bad things happening in the world. They're very paranoid and, they, and I need to, to own this, this artillery just in case something happens to be able to protect myself or my family. I'm, I'm in a very paranoid. Paranoia is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of paranoia? Pronoia. Pronoia. Pronoia is a person experiencing the belief that the world around them conspires to do them good. I need us to all heal to the point that we become so pronoia that we spread that all around the world that because we believe that the world around us, it is conspiring to do us good. I believe that. And let me tell you, you cannot have a pronoia state of mind and believe that there will one day be peace on earth. You cannot have that you have to have a pronoia state of mind first you have to have it did you realize that we want there to be peace on earth then you first have to believe and know that the world can conspire to do good all around you that's what we're fighting for world peace right that's what we're hoping for that's what we have faith in that's what we believe in right now so we're not getting ready to operate from a paranoia state of mind. No, that is so not who we are. We're awakening these senses. So when you start to see this now, you will recognize it and go, oh my gosh, they're very paranoid. Let me teach them a new word. Let me help them flip that coin and get to the other side and tell them there's another choice. Everybody's not conspiring against you. When I do the work and as an activist, that's one of the things that I share because let's be honest, a lot of our black and brown uh, brothers and sisters have been attacked and over-policed and killed by officers. So it makes them very paranoid when they're getting pulled over by officers or they find themselves in, you know, in, in the vicinity of, of police officers because they're paranoid about what has happened in the past. But I told them, you have the power to be pro -noia. If you believe that these officers can't do good, that's the energy that you bring into the room and that's the only energy they can connect with. I got pulled over by a police officer a few weeks ago. <laughs> I was leaving uh, an event late at night, I was tired. And I was speeding, just trying to hurry up and get home. <laughs> I'm being honest. And so as I was driving and the officer pulled me over, I put the dome light on in my car so he could see me. And I had my hands on the wheel. Now, most of you all in this space today won't have to do all of this. But because I know the past of how things can happen and show up, 
I had to take these extra steps because my skin is brown. But guess what? I wasn't paranoid because I knew the pronoia in me is going to do all the things that I need to do to stay, stay safe, create energy that this police officer is going to attach to. And this is going to be in my favor. So when he comes to the car, he taps on my window on the, because he pulled me over the highway. He taps on my window on the passenger side. And I put the, I put the window down and I said, hello, officer. I am so sorry that I merged over without using my blinker. He says, you did, but that's not all you did. You were also going 81. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness. No wonder I didn't use my blinker. I moved over so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so he started laughing just like you all. he says what are you in such a hurry for I said I've been out all day doing all types of things in the community I told him who I was and I and he says well can I see your license and your um your registration and so I, I said sure I'm gonna I, I'm going to now this is me still communicating from a place of understanding right but I'm communicating from a place of pronoia, not being paranoid, because paranoid would have been a different conversation. This is all pronoia conversation happening. I said, okay, officer, I said, it's in my wallet. If it's okay with you, I'm going to reach inside there and get that out for you. He said, sure, no problem. Because guess what? I removed his fear with my energy. And so as I did that, handing him what he needed, he took a look at it. He says, now, listen, I'm going to let you go today, <laughs> but I want you to promise me you're going to slow down. I said, slow down. Listen, I'm going to go so slow. I'm not going to come until in the morning. <laughs> and, it a, and, I, and, we, and I'm just 15 minutes away. I said, that's how slow I'm going to go. He says, no, don't go that slow either because we'll then pull you over for that. I said, okay, no problem. I found my a happy medium. But the point is, that was me showing up by making a decision after I did what? I when you because soon as you see those lights and you know they're from you, that's trauma for some. That was trauma. So I had to stop, breathe, and think. Okay, here we go. Pulling you over, Marty, put the dome light on, hands on the wheel, smile, let the window down, let them know, admit what you did wrong. And we had found favor. I got let go. I didn't get let go because I didn't do anything wrong. I got let go because I created an energy field that I brought him into that made him feel guilty for giving me a ticket <laughs> after he realized I'm a nice person. <laughs> right? So that's flipping the coin. That's flipping the coin. I didn't have to be paranoid. I know these cops killed Michael Brown. I know these cops killed George Floyd. I know these cops have done a lot of things. <laughs> But we change the world when we change ourselves and we change ourselves because we are looking at things from a different perspective through a new lens. I refuse to be paranoid, going to be pro -noia. So how do I do that? This is how I do that. And I'm going to send this to you, Anne, so you can send it to everyone. So I'm going to send you this, and I'm also going to send you this. So the first thing that I want to go over with you all right now, this is the Ungun Daily Checkup. The first thing that I do is I start my morning out. I, I started off by being intentional, capital I, capital N, intentional, intentional. That means I go inside myself. You feed your inner soul with meditation, prayer, or affirmation. 
And of course, eat a little something. Breakfast, they say this, the number one meal of the day. Well, for me, it really, really, really is. My body requires me to wake up and eat something. And then I, now I can function. I can think. It may not be that for everyone because however we trained our brain is then the brain tells the body what to do. Maybe some people just can't just go in eating something, but just make sure before you start doing too much throughout the day, you take something, some food into your body. If it's a cracker, if it's some water, if it's, if it's a banana, a piece of fruit, whatever it might be, but that is important. Number two, be intentional about your mental breaks. What we call an ungun is 314. It's a tool and a technique that we use called 314. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, so go figure that is our area code. But 314 to you really means three times a day, choose one activity to do for four minutes each. I'm going to repeat that. Three times a day, choose one activity to do for four minutes each. Did I say for 30 minutes? No. Did I say for one hour? No. Why? Because that's too long for you mentally to take it in and to rev yourself up quickly. You want to rev yourself up and then stop. And you want to do that three times a day, then stop. Why? Because when trauma hits, trauma revs up quickly and you got to be able to quickly respond to it. You don't need, you won't have 30 minutes to respond to trauma. You won't have one hour to respond to trauma. You're going to have a few minutes to be able to respond. So if you retrain the brain to say, this is how long it takes us to get to something good happening for us where we can relax and we can calm down then that's how long it will be for you to be able to respond with that trauma. So you're gonna have that process where something just happened. I'm just using this as an example. You just, I witnessed a really bad car accident. <gasps> oh no, no way. Let me stop. Let me breathe. Let me think. Okay, calm down. Let me go over here and now see what I can do to help. In whatever way that I can, making sure everybody is safe, I'm safe, this is what I do next. See, in that four minutes, you are able to pull that down. You would not be able to do that if you don't practice. That's important. Number three, choose you, that you, that you, choose you. Make sure you never, these are some big yous, underestimate the urgency to unplug. Those are three big yous. Choose you. Make sure you never underestimate the urgency to unplug. Unplug from negativity. Unplug from somebody talking bad about others. Unplug from the news when it's overwhelming. Unplug from things that don't serve you well. Unplug from it. It is important that you know how to unplug. Stay away from negative toxic talk, media outlets, and people that bring in negative energy. It's important. Sometimes emails can be overwhelming. It's just too much information we got to respond to at one time. Say, you know what? I'm going to go in. I'm going to check my first five emails and then I'll erase those and I'll go back later and check five more. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. Know how to unplug when it's necessary. Number four, midday big break. This is the big break. Take time to eat lunch, drink some water and power walk for at least five minutes. See, what we're doing, we are actually feeding our mind, body, and spirit. That's your inner team. Your mind, body, and spirit, that's who's working for you all day, every day. You got to make sure your team is cheering for you all day. Never allow your team to start fighting from within. You're going to lose the game called life, right? Keep them cheering for you. Yeah, we got this. Let's go in. Come on, Leah. We got it, Marilyn. Come on, Rhonda. Come on, Gail, Angela, Maria, Virginia, Laura, so whoop, whoop. That's what you want your team to do. But when trauma and chaos is happening, what's happening on the inside is your mind, body, and spirit, they're arguing. They're not on the same page. So you got to make sure you take that big break together with them. Number five, check in with your inner team, which is the mind, body, and soul by doing those three quick entries. Remember how you feel leads to what you think. This is how I do a daily dump. I actually keep these on my desk. You can make these, you can make them, you can buy them at the dollar store, whatever it was, $1.25 now where I live. But anyway, you can get these cards and a daily dump looks like this. What is it I have to do today that I might be somewhat worried about and I need to let it go? 
I have another event right after this. I'm not going to speed. No speeding. No speeding. I'm already telling my mind what I needed to do. Right? This is important. No speeding for me today. I will get there when I get there. I'm not going to worry about that. So by dumping this right now, I'm already putting that information in my mind and controlling what needs to happen next. I'm getting out in front of what could take place. Uh, daily, daily dumping is important. Number six, do the math. Your yes equals how much time. It equals how much money. It equals how much physical activity. Add all of that stuff up before you say yes to somebody. How much is that going to cost you, right? Do the math. It will equal how much time, how much money, how much of your physical activity. Sometimes saying no can save you. Don't be afraid to say no. And no is a complete sentence. Do it with a smile. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I can't. It's okay. That word was created for a reason. They set boundaries with it. Number seven, self-care partnership. I'm going to send this to Ann as well. On the back of here, it says uh, check-in partner, and it allows you to put their name, their phone number, what's best time to text them, a.m. or p.m. Um, and this simple card here basically are colored hearts. You got to check in when your partner, when you're going through something. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do this right now. And then I want you to tell me what color heart would, would be on your, uh, use the chat if you can, those who can. Uh, red means I'm doing great. Orange means I'm pretty good. Yellow means I'm okay. Green means I'm struggling. Blue means I feel lonely. Purple means I'm having a hard day. Black means I'm not doing good. Brown means I'm afraid. And a pink heart means I'm in pain. So what color are you today? Red, doing great. Orange, pretty good. Yellow, okay. Green, struggling. Blue, lonely. Purple, hard day. Black, not doing good. Brown, afraid. Pink, in pain. Those individuals that I work with, we do workshops, we do speaking engagements, we do all types of things, tours, you name it. But every individual that I work with, I make sure that they have this card. And believe it or not, this very simple communication has helped so many people and so many things. I work with police officers, FBI agents, uh, uh, firemen, teachers. Uh, it doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter how old, but each of them, this is how I communicate with them, quick and easy quick and easy. And when I get someone sends me a brown heart, someone sent me a brown heart a couple of weeks ago that says, I'm afraid. I text back and said, immediately, I just received your, your color. What's going on? It says, today I have to go to court and I'm very scared. I said, what time is court and where I'll be there? Myself, along with Tamika that's on here, we went to court with him. We showed up and we sat out there with him. Later on, after he'd gone through that whole process of going to court, he then sent me back a heart and it went from brown all the way up to yellow, which says, I'm okay. Once he got home, he said he sent a yellow heart to say, I'm okay. That communication, us being there, not having a whole lot to say because he did, he's, he's already afraid. He doesn't have a whole conversation for me. He doesn't have that to give. But he needed to at least let somebody know, check in with somebody and to let us know this is what he was dealing with. So that was the outcome. Uh, number eight, plan ahead. Plan your meals, your meetings, your 314 breaks. Remember, you're going to do those three times a day. Plan ahead. Think about what you're going to do for your 314. It could be painting. It could be meditation. But whatever it is, make sure it's just for you. And then number nine, balance the to-do list, your task. Whatever it is that you have as a task that you've been kind of like, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. That's okay. That happens sometimes, but balance it with a treat. You know what, Marty, if you get this laundry done today, go ahead and eat that bag of chips that's been sitting on the, the counter <laughs> after you, that you've been trying not to eat. Sometimes you have to reward yourself.
and you have to retrain your brain to kind of trick it and reward it. So task and treat, balance that out. Number 10, always remember this, calm over chaos. Choose calm over chaos. End the day the way that you started. So you want to end it with meditation. You want to end it with prayer and affirmation. Get a good eight hours of sleep. You deserve to be your best you. If you start the day off and end it the same way, everything that happens in between, it will never take you out because you started it by loving you, giving you what you needed. You ended it by loving you, giving you what you needed because the other people that we see throughout the day, I call that enemy territory. Anything on the outside of you is enemy territory because you can't, you can't determine or change how somebody's going to show up. But what you do have control of is the enemy. So take the focus off the enemy and put it on the enemy. And the more you do that, the better you will feel. And then you will be able to bring others into that energy field. Blessings to all. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. I am Dr. Marty with Ungun Institute, and I appreciate you and your time. Applause, applause, applause. Love and gratitude and what you have given us can not only save me, but save the world. So um, I knew why we asked you. I am so grateful that you said yes. Deep, deep gratitude. Everybody open up your mics and just gratitude questions and Thank you, Sam. <laughs> You're so very welcome. You're so very welcome. And we do have simple tools that we sell, we make available to you. So anybody that may need a, a deck of self-care cards, we have those available. We also have the uh, one-week guide to coaching and motivating uh, your inner artist. And that's just really a nice way of saying your inner spirit. Some words, sometimes, you know, because we come from all different uh, places from around the world, sometimes people will hear a word and they'll go, oh, no, I don't, that's not what I do or what I practice or whatever. So it's safe sometimes to just call it an artist because we are all artists. We were all created in God's image and, and we are perfectly made in his image. And so you're uniquely you. There's not another person. Isn't that amazing? There's not another person in this world that will ever be like you. Now, how do you spell from paranoia to paranoid paranoia. to par say it again, spell oh, it for it's me. It's P-R-O-N-I-A. P-R-O-N-I-A. That's what I had. Very good. Spike of sounds. Yes. I love new words. This is great. I know. Use it in Scrabble. They, they'll challenge you, and then you'll get an extra 50 points. <laughs> I was saying, uh, clapping my hands because I could recognize, recognize myself uh, when you tell, tell us your story. I was not the same, the same 10 years ago, too. I was a very, very quick to react, you know. And then I began to meditate. I had to uh, seriously begin to work with my, you know, inner spirit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i in very very quick i learned myself to uh, be in uh, be in my body when i begin to uh, panic you know what happening what's happening in in my surroundings oh maria you have to go outside outside in the house uh, outside the house and take a breath and then i say hello to my body hello body I okay? By that way, very quick, I learned myself to, I was expert, really expert to fight again 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now you know, you can stop breathing things. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Leah, what about you? I'm so grateful, Marnie, for everything you shared. I love how you're breaking everything down into really practical, easy to use things day to day. And that's so valuable. So I can't wait to get your information shared on the website because that's one thing that we're doing was creating an online village of support and how do we bring your work into our communities because I work in the Ypsilanti community what you're teaching would be so valuable there 
my question would be, how do we introduce your materials to our community? What would be the best way? Sure. Well, thank, thank you. And, and I'm excited about that. That's very honoring. Um, myself along, like I said, I have uh, one of my trainers on here now, Tamika, and we have several trainers from around the world. Um, it's, uh, well, I have, well, I, I made it sound like I have thousands. I only have like 10, with 10 of us that, that have been trained thus far. But so it's easy to book us. All you need to do is just get in contact with me, just like as Anne has. Tell me what it is and what you need. And then we can hold a Zoom workshop. We do workshops. We do in-person workshops. I can fly to, into wherever you are as Ann is sending me to Chicago. So wherever is doable where I can get there or we can get there, we're coming. And this is exactly, Leah, what you're asking is how we will begin to see the uh, world peace that we've been praying about. We can say it all day long. We need world peace. But if you don't, if you're not able to give people uh, practical tools and solutions of how to create it, then we will just be saying it over and over again. You have to show them that flip side, just like Ann just said, that new word. We know the word paranoia. We knew that word, but we didn't know pronoia. And so the opposite of paranoid is being pronoia. And that's what we want to teach. So that's simple stuff is what will help people to be better. So to answer your question, I'm a phone call away. I am just a message away, an email away. Just tell me what you need when you need it. And we'll figure out if it's me or if it's one of my trainers, if it's on Zoom, if it's in person and what that, you know, it's some, some things come with a fee, some things does not, it just depends, but whatever it is, we can work that out. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment or a question? I would just uh, thank uh, Gail, uh, Gail and, uh, to invite me to this to this amazing amazing crowd. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> well, I would like to say that this is an incredible work. This idea of coming from paranoia to pronoia is really something that can help us mm. change something, not only about ourselves, but all the others. Mm. So I, I would like to have this material here <laughs> <laughs> as soon as possible, because we are working with this project, Victims to Victors, and it deals with a lot of pain, a lot of, Sex slaves, Victoria knows about this. And that's one idea that I would like even to get you in touch with one of the women that works with those sex slaves here in Italy. She's from Nigeria. And maybe we can develop something, but thank you so much. This is an incredible work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I just much. Uh, talked to Angela this morning um, <clears throat> before the call, and Angela had said in the work of healing for women who have been sexually abused, sex trafficking, domestic violence, what it, the, the statistics were was only one out of 10. Isn't that what you said, Angela? Yeah. Become healed. And she really wants to make sure. And with your program to raise that to be a hundred percent, if possible, I just wanted to raise that up, Angela, because that was like when I heard that this morning. One out of ten become healed. Whatever. I was shocked as well when Sandra told me that. You know, she has been working. She was a sex slave has herself, and she has been working for more than fifteen years with these women, and she actually developed a kind of a process to not put work in some women that just go back to the situation because they are not willing to face because it's not easy also to you have no papers you have you are nobody to become someone it's it's a, a struggle one in ten can make it mm. so let's try to we work with pronoia 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you that, and that is exactly the uh, end results of what mm-hmm. a gun does, right? When we help to remove those trauma blocks, I describe them almost like blood clots, right? When you, if you, mm-hmm. you have a blood clot, you're now running the risk at any given time of that blood clot to hit a main artery and then your life ends just like that, no warning. And that's the same thing. We have emotional clots that's going on and it has to be ungunned. That's the work that we do. And when we can help you, because it's a, it's a five session process that I take individuals through. So what you all received here today is the knowledge of what we do and why we ungun, but to the actual ungunning itself and the process and, and the work, uh, that's not what you experience here. But what you're talking about right now, Angela, I would love to do a workshop to actually ungun those individuals who've experienced that type of trauma, you will be shocked and surprised on what will uh, come from that and how they will show up because we can't change what they've been through, right? Mm -hmm. But we can change how they feel about it. And where we remove that emotional clot, it now will not run a risk of it taking them out. Their life is worthy. They are worthy and they are not the things that they've been through. They are so much more than what they've been through. But sometimes you have to teach and show and remind individuals about that. And that's what we would be able to do through a workshop. So I'm very, very interested in that. And just so you know, I actually just became an African queen in Nigeria. And so (laughs) for my crowning, I will have to actually go to Nigeria for the ceremony next year in 2023. So we can already build a relationship. And when I go there, their queen will ungun them. And look at that. Look at life. Isn't that beautiful? (laughs) <laughs> that the day I got pulled over by the police officer was when my crowning happened. Oh. <laughs> I know. Isn't that interesting? Wow. So yes, Marilyn, I saw in the chat that you put an orange heart. Everyone else uh, kind of said they had a red one. I'll take orange. Orange is good. You said I'm pretty good, but pretty I just good. want, you're pretty good, but yeah. I just wanted to let you know if whatever it is that's keeping you from being great, my prayer for you today, I want to just personally say to you, my prayer to you today is that you will get to a place of where it becomes a great day. So whatever it is that may be standing in the way right now, I touch and agree with you that it will be removed and that your emotions will be unleashed and, and the blessings will fall on you so that your day will be great and amazing because you most certainly are and you deserve that. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's, that's very, very kind. It's a matter of age catching up with me and the exhaustion that comes with it. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. I understand. I might just be 51 years old, but sometimes I have to check that birth certificate and to go, I, I feel a little older than 51. <laughs> well, I've got 34 years it. on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am like, but- this is still working pretty well. So I'm oh, that's, right. and that's all, you know what? And that's, that's all that counts. Test. I'm going to be honest. That's the that's main what works thing. for me. Yeah. That's yeah. the main thing. Absolutely. Virginia, how about you it's a pleasure to have you in the room today as well i would just like to just ask what were your thoughts and do you have any comments okay i just want to thank you for that talk it was so engaging you're stopped by the police i went through the same thing and i was feeding i just had to smell and apologize he was like okay okay just slow down but then uh, it's really nice like to just stop and think like you said it gives you a chance to kind of remember who i are what can you say or something because i tend to just simply blatter and you don't know what is going to happen. So I think you just really need to think before you speak. And another thing you talked about was um, pointing fingers. And then that reminded me of my mom. She used to tell us, every time you point a finger, remember three fingers are pointing. (laughs) So you just have to know, change starts with you. So that's really good. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. And Rhonda, how about you? I'm okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> 
there was a lot of A's in that okay. <laughs> yes, I know, I know, but I, I'm very fortunate. I do have a lot of tools for self-care. It's something yeah. that I've been doing for a long time and it's something I teach other people to do. I really, really enjoy listening to you. Thank you so much. And I, there's something, I love the pro noia thing. My mother is coming to visit in a couple of weeks. I can't wait to share that with her. I really can't because she gets, she, my sister lives with her. My sister is very paranoid about all the stuff that's going on in the world. And I can see the effect that it has on my mom. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing some of that with her. Very good. Well, thank you, Rhonda. And thank you for your transparency. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Gail. And how about you? Well, <laughs> I have a, a, a challenging brain. I'm autistic. So I have hearts of all colors coming in all at once sometimes. And mm -hmm. today it's red, it's orange, it's blue, it's <laughs> all yeah. those colors and it changes from moment to moment or they're all there at once. And, and so dealing with that and the autism can be challenging and there's nothing that anybody can do about it uh even i can't because the brain will do what the brain does and everybody says well control i said i'm autistic i can't control it it mm -hmm. it does what it does it thinks what it thinks and then i have to clean up the mess afterwards you know that's a not a good thought you have to go on a good way and you know so i'm always cleaning up <laughs> the hearts that are falling into my brain <laughs> I, so I, I understand that as well. And while thank you so much for sharing that, my uh, nephew has autism. And one of the ways when I think about how he takes in information for us, those who, in, who are uh, wired in a way that's non-autism, we are on, if you will, imagine being on a two-way street, traffic's going this way, that way. But a person that has autism they have like about five lanes going at one time. So they're constantly thinking about how not to have a car crash. So what I say to you today, Gail, no car crashes, no car crashes. As you move around in traffic right now today, no car crashes, give yourself grace. I love the fact that you know who you are and that you are aware that you are in a five lane traffic moving right now, but no car crashes, speak <laughs> positive, speak life, and know that you are perfectly made in his image. And thank you for sharing. Thank you. Cool enough. Tamika, go ahead. Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yes. Such uh, a blessing to be able to make it with you all. As Dr. Marty knows, I have just traveled back from Mexico and a few of the planes were delayed due to weather. So I just, I made it on just in time to see your beautiful faces. Always an honor to just be in the midst of the work that Dr. Marty has created and God has blessed her to do. We are just, I, I mean, I can't even describe the feeling of being able to, I don't even like to call it work because it's, it's just, it's a feel good thing. We love people. We love the thought of healing. It's been a blessing to be able to be ungunned, to know what that feels like, and to know that it's okay to have a different color heart every day, if that's where you are, but to know the possibility of having that healing heart and, and having that to look forward to, and someone telling you that makes all the difference. So I just wish that a process like Ungun was available many, many years ago, but you know, timing is everything. And we just thank God for the blessing that it is for us now. And we can go and share that with the world and with our family members and our loved ones, just sharing that color heart, the heart color wheel with them, just that alone, you just have no idea of the lives that it can change. And Dr. Marty's putting it in the camera now. It is amazing. So I definitely urge you, if nothing else, that's a big takeaway. Stop breathing, think. Absolutely. But yeah. that color wheel, even sharing that with your families um, and sending that screenshot, it can be a, a major game changer. So I bless you all. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. And look forward to seeing you all in the future. Yes, we're coming everywhere you are. So put your countries or your cities in the chat before we go so we know where you are actually located because we do. We want to come and visit your hometown and do an ungun in-person workshop. Would love to make that happen. Love it. And you can stay connected to Dr. Marty Casey through the Green Tent Circle. 
I know, Marty, that you are on our Facebook group. So you can also put information there. I we'll sure have will. it on the website. I love it, Anne. And Anne, I love you. You are so, so amazing in so many ways. And I just thank you for the connection. <laughs> I believe it was Laura Saw that actually connected us initially. I think I heard, I got, I don't know how I heard about you. I, I, I looked you up on Google on gun or something. And then I got where you could make a phone call. I called and usually an organ institution, you get, you know, I got you. And remember we had this conversation and we could not stop talking. Okay, yes. We were instantly <laughs> sisters. And Absolutely. Then, and then Laura Saw went to visit you. She got to be yeah. with you in person. And she she's now visited me in person and she's visited Angela in Italy in person. And wow. uh, yeah, so it, you know, we're a real, we're a real, real sisterhood. And that's what I love about this is that we're all these just incredible queens. I we, love are the all queens. <laughs> we are all queens. That's exactly right. Well, it has been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you all so much for taking your time out this morning, afternoon, wherever you may be. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. And Anne, I'm going to come and visit you too. <laughs> Great.